Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. So I just got done stringing for the Battle in the Bay Classic College Tournament here in San Francisco. And I wanted to go over with you some of the things that I, you know, had to do, the strings that I had to use, the tensions that were used, and some of the trends that are going on nowadays. All right, stay tuned. All right, guys, so coffee sponsor of today is Ken Ang. Ken writes, hey, Harry, my wife, after watching your video, bought a head TIS-6, leaded it up to about 300 grams, and strung it with Yonex Polytor Pro 120 at 57 pound. She loves it so very much much. A million thanks. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you sharing these great stories with me. I'm glad that I'm able to help the tennis community out there. So I'm, you know, thank you for sharing these things because I really do appreciate um, you guys doing that. All right, Ken, thank you for the coffee also. I'm going to hit myself with it right now. Mm. Mm. Nice dark roast today. Uh, if you want to be my coffee sponsor of the day, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. Thank you all in advance. All right. So I just got done stringing here at the Battle in the Bay Classic where all the, where a lot of the college kids come and compete for individual, um, like an individual title here in San Francisco. So it was a 64 person draw on the men's side and a 32 person draw on the women's side. Singles, a little bit of doubles, but, uh, wanted to share with you what, uh, what happened on the stringing side. So what we don't usually see is what happens in the stringing room where, uh, you know, you see Nadal sending a racket back once in a while and then the guy in the dark trying to string it as fast as he can. But let me give you a little bit of insight as to what goes on at least in our stringing room where I have to actually go and, and basically knock them out. Okay, knock the strings out. So let me just show you some big numbers here. On the men's side here, we strung 71 rackets. Okay, on the women's side, we strung 29. Now this was basically Wednesday through Sunday. Uh, there was a back draw also. So if you lost in the first round, um, you, you continued to play another uh, round until you lost again. So there was a front draw final, a back draw final, okay, for both the men and the women. So people played on even though they uh, lost in the first round, okay? High tension for the men's was 60 pounds. High tension for the women was 56 pounds. So the one person that Strung at 60 pounds was uh, my man Iligan from Hawaii. And I remember stringing his racket because it was a Blade 98, 1820. And he used Kevlar 16 on the mains, 60 pounds. Torbite 16 on the cross, 60 pounds. I was stringing that racket and I'm like, I remember this guy from last year. He basically has tennis elbow strings at a tennis elbow tension. Cause that's like one of the deadest combinations you can have. Kevlar has zero power, super stiff, loses tension in a hurry. 
so it's like a board, like a board, basically, a board on a board. I mean, you're probably going to get a little bit of play from that Torbite, but that Kevlar is giving you nothing. So they're both super hard strings at a high tension. Um, I have to give it to him, though, because he's like literally ranked number 26 in the singles uh, rankings in college. So my man can play. Okay, my man can play. Um, 56 pounds again for women. Low tensions though. Let's take a look at this. Low tension, 44 on the men's, 42 on the women's. The popular tensions were 52 for the men, 50 for the women. So a lot of them just went with those two tensions. So the midpoint tension of everything, so the average median tension of the men was 51.6. The average on the women were 49.3. So that's the average of all the string jobs. There were no synthetic guts, even as a hybrid. So no Maltese, didn't even smell one, okay? Zero. Now, hybrid with natural gut. On the cross, we had two players use that on the men's side and one on the women's side. So this was when you put the poly on the main and the natural gut on the cross. Uh, the men had, the two people on the men's side was Babalot. It was Wilson on the women's side. Now, the popular strings that a lot of them used on the men's side, it was Torbite 16 by Selenko, Hyper G 16 by Selenko, and Yonex Polytor Pro 16. On the women's side, it was Hyper G 16, Polytor Pro 16. Okay, so all polys here. Poly, poly, poly. Um, I'll talk about the, uh, the alarming trend in a minute, but I mean, there were Definitely, you know, Luxalon ALU Powers, RPM Blast. Um, everything seems to be 16 gauge though. Once in a blue moon, I'll string a 17 gauge, but most of them are 16. Why are they using 16? Because it probably breaks too fast for them if they use anything thinner. Um, sometimes it's hard to find a stringer, therefore, you know, you kind of use the thickest thing you can use and hopefully it doesn't break so quickly. But I did want to get into this alarming trend thing because I did write it on the bottom because a lot of these players, you know, the farther they got uh, towards the semis, the quarters and into the finals, uh, the more they strung. So literally... Some of the players that made it into the quarters and the finals, I would see their rackets right after the match. They would give me the same two that they got, literally played with for an hour or an hour and a half, and they handed me back the rackets. And I'm like, whoa, you just used these. And when I cut them out, it was like fresh. The tension was still holding but they wanted to restring it. So I was like, this is still fresh. And, and so I went to Coach Steve Jackson, the tournament director, with this, because his son was actually playing in this, and he made it to the uh, semis. And he, his kid was one of the ones that um, kept handing me two to four every time he won. And I was like, Coach, what's the deal with this? And he's like, it's a superstitious thing and it's a feel thing because the more my son wins, the more he wants it fresh. The more he wants to recreate that, that freshness, that tightness of the string bed. So I was like, wow, it's literally played with for an hour and a half and, and he wants it done. And he's like, you know what? It's more mental than anything else. I don't know or think that he actually can feel the difference, but um, psychologically, it, it helps him. So anytime you can get a mental edge, um, hey, 
right? You, you do it, you take it, you, you see whatever happens and, and it's a superstition thing, right? You know, you ever, you ever wear the same thing over and over again until you lose and just to keep the winning streak going? Well, that's kind of the trend that um, he was going down. But he wasn't the only one, though. People that were um, along with him in the semis and into the finals, those guys wanted fresh string jobs, too. And, you know, I'm afraid that, you know, as, as a kid in, in, in college, I mean, unless you go somewhere where there's a stringer, Right, You're, it's going to be difficult to to replicate what's going on here. I mean, at a tournament, you know, most likely there will be a stringer on site for you, but if you go to you know certain you know schools that that you're playing against, they're probably not going to have a stringer waiting for you. So, uh, and hopefully, you know, without a fresh string job on site, you can you know, kind of push through um, because you you get into that kind of trend and, you know, it can play with you, you know, positively when when they can do it and it may mess with you negatively if, you know, no one's there to do it for you. So, but but that was kind of an alarming trend. Everybody's kind of wanting to be like Nadal these days, sending rackets back because you want a fresh string job, you know. Uh, are you one of those people? Uh, do, is a fresh string job psychological for you? Do you feel a difference? I mean, yeah. I mean, whatever works, right? I get it. I get it. All right. So that was what I learned. I mean, it's no surprise to me, but I wanted to kind of share that with the viewers out there as to you know, what kind of strings people use, how tight they go, um, surprisingly pretty low, right? I've seen this trend for probably, it's been probably 12 years now, um, that I've seen like in the 40s, in the low 50s with pretty much all poly. And it's probably been going on for a lot longer than that already. All right, so guys, I hope I taught you something. Maybe you don't need that fresh string drop. All right. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Coach Good, check yeah. this out. Swing Vision got new commercial out. Oh. Check out his James Blake Ronick. and yeah. Ronick. Oh my God. He's still playing? I mean, he's still playing. Whoa. 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 Dude, dude. That's damn fast. I can do it. I can do it, dude. Back in the day, I could I could do that. I could totally do that, dude. You can do that. You can do that. Let's go, man. We can show them how it's done. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All Let's right. Go. All right. All right. 85 miles per hour. That can't be right. No, that's definitely right. That's definitely right, man. 88 miles per hour. That's not a gigawatt. One more, one more. Watch me, watch me. 78 miles per hour. Hey, man. <laughs> Something wrong with this program. Nah, that's just you, bro. L you try, you try. Right, Let's okay, see what I'll you do. It. I'll do it. You're going to go 69 right here. 127 miles per hour. You can check out your serve speed on Swing Vision 2. Doc, we got an issue.